You know the vibes. Welcome back to another episode of the Hoop Genius Podcast brought to you by NBA 2K23. Mo Mootsi alongside me as always, the one, the only, Mr. BJ Armstrong. Real name. No gimmicks. You know, no gimmicks today, Mo. No gimmicks. Let's keep it real. What you got? What you got? What you got? What you got? What you got on the agenda today? I have had a bad day today. Oh, wow. So I woke up this morning. Very excited. I woke up this morning. I looked at my calendar and I said, you know what day it is. It's the day we've been waiting for almost all season. It is the day that could potentially decide the MVP race. It's the day oh. that Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid go head to head in Denver. And we're going to see what's really going on. They played once before the season, but now it's in the closing. It's in, it's in the pressure time. We've got to see what's good. And then I get to about lunchtime. I'm still excited. I'm talking to my friends. I'm talking to people about tonight's game. In my head, I'm thinking, all right, cool. Me and BJ will record this after the game. Guess what, guys? It's still an hour and a half till tip-off when we decided to record a podcast. Why? Because Joel Embiid is not playing. The showdown of the MVP frontrunners is off. The Sixers are ruling out Joel Embiid with his calf. Um, he attempted to work out this morning, but the team is taking a precautionary approach given the density of the recent schedule. Now, that sounds all well and good. You know, playoffs to sue. You don't want him to play and hurt his calf. But here's my problem. Number one, I just spent last week with Alan Iverson, who would literally find any possible way to play no matter what. There, in fact, was a day where the team didn't want him to play so that they didn't bring his jersey And he paid a kid to go to a local store, buy his jersey, a replica version, and bring it to the arena just so he had something to play in, right? This is the players that we grew up watching. You know if Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant was playing, they would find a way to play even if their calf was sore. But aside from all the hypotheticals, right? The Sixers and Embiid had back-to-back... Did they lose to the Warriors and and the Suns? Uh, They played the Warriors back-to-back on Friday and Saturday, right? Yes. And yes. and I get every game matters. You want to play every game. Um, but, you know, the, the Suns game, let's focus on for a, for a second. On Sunday, they were down big. They, we knew they had lost the game. They knew they had lost the game. But Embiid was still playing, uh, even though he dropped an interview today saying that he doesn't stat bad. But we'll get on to the interview in a second. Um, what did he say? What did Joel Embiid say? He doesn't what? He doesn't stat bad like other MVP candidates. Oh. He was throwing some oh, okay. shade. We'll talk about that in a sec. Anyway, um, But this right calf soreness that he has allegedly came around on March the 22nd. That was before their back-to-back. Yet he played 70 minutes on back-to-back games against the Warriors and the Suns. But now, despite having a day off to rest, it's bothering him too much to play. Now, if you are trying to win this MVP that he, he says he doesn't care about, yet he's doing interviews trying to convince the media to vote for him, throwing shade at the other candidates... So he doesn't care about the MVP, but he actually does. If you care about it so much, then would you not take off one of the back-to-back nights? Would you not play the Warriors, then rest against the Suns, and then come and play against the Nuggets? Because you know this is the game that everyone wants to watch. This is my problem with it. Fair enough, you have a sore calf. I understand. You don't want to be injured for the playoffs. I understand. But the whole world's waiting for this. And then I did a little bit of research. I thought, when was the last time he actually played in Denver? Because he played against the Nuggets in Philly earlier this year. Played against them in Philly last year. And that was kind of embarrassing for him. But the last time he played in Denver was in 2019. What happened in that game, may I ask? They choked. The 76ers choked a 21-point fourth quarter lead. And Nikola Jokic hit the game winner. And on the next possession, Embiid fouls out after committing an offensive foul against Nikola Jokic. An embarrassing loss. Eight turnovers for Embiid, six of 17 from the field. And he's not played in Denver since then. Now, I'm not saying he's scared of playing in Denver. I'm not saying he doesn't want to play in Denver. I'm just saying it's a little suspicious. BJ, what's your take on the big fella deciding not to play in the maybe, maybe, well, for me personally, the most anticipated game of the regular season? If you took every single game across the entire regular season, this is number one on my list of games I wanted to watch. Number one. What do you think? 
Well, I don't know how many games he's played overall, talking about Joel Embiid, but I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume that he hasn't played over 65 games. So every game for him at this stage matters if he's gonna be and make a legit case for MVP. Along he's played with, 61. Okay. And I'm gonna assume I don't know how many more he's played. He's probably played six or seven more than Joel Embiid. Yoke just Joel played 66. Coach. Okay, so all right, all right. Uh, you know, again, I'm just doing it off the eye test. Yep. So now, those guys, if they're gonna be, you know, what is it, about eight or nine games left in the season? Yeah. So both of them probably want to play a minimum of seventy games. I don't know if Joel can even get to seventy games now to play. If you're gonna make a a, a legitimate case for MVP, so and Joel would Joel. Well knows that, right? Games played matters. Now, stats and all those other things, that's opinion, that's debate, but you got to be your availability does matter. So if Joel is hurt and anyone who's had a calf injury, okay, those are like hamstring injuries. You don't play with those. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I don't know the severity of it. I would imagine that the medical staff at this time of the season three games and four nights in three different cities or something like that. You know, they've come in from the East coast going out to golden state. Then they go over to Phoenix and then a day off and then they play. So I would imagine that the medical staff and the way these guys, you know, the, the way the medical staff works for precautionary reasons. I don't know. I don't, I haven't read it. I haven't seen it. I'm just listening to what you're, what you're saying. I just heard that he wasn't playing. I don't know why. You know, or what's the, the 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 medical? I just heard that he wasn't playing. But you're saying if he goes out there and let's say he rips his calf, for instance, a la Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns hasn't played a game. I just he, heard the he other just night. Came back. He just came and this happened in November. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Mo. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as selfishly as I would like to have seen this game. With no doubt about it. You know, Mo, in the end, the health of these players is of the greatest concern. So I'm not going to push him through at this stage of the game, three games and four nights. But my question game in a game. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. In a game in March, knowing very well that we have something, we have something bigger to play for. That, that's okay. a fact. Okay. Okay. Now, but there is, there is a underlying game within the game that I would love to see. And now we will have to wait Mo patiently until the NBA finals to see it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> what year? And then Mo, <laughs> and then when it happens, and now if he doesn't play in the NBA finals, then Mo, let's you and I dedicate an entire month. To why he didn't play. Okay. So, I, and I'm not, and let me tell you something. Now, I, I I happen to know JoJo a little bit. And let me tell you something. JoJo's not d- ducking no action. Okay. I, I'm going to make that clear. And I'm going to say this so about it's, it's just a coincidence. And, and, Every and, time and, he goes to Denver, he doesn't play. And, and I'm going to say this. And, and Jokic isn't ducking any action. And you know what I respect about Jokic? Jokic took one. He took a hit. Yeah. Okay. Because... Because JoJo gave him a little work. And I respect Jokic showing up at 7.30 and saying, let's go, let's let's run this back. So I like it. I like what they do. But I, I know JoJo. JoJo, you know, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think he is doing that. But I will say this. Three games and four nights and... Knowing very well the last thing you want to do at this stage is to be out. That's the last thing you want to do. Yes. That's the last thing you want so, to do. That's the last so thing you, you want to do. You think it's just a coincidence every time they have to go to Denver for the past. We're in 2023 now. And the last time we played there was last decade, 2019. It's just a well, coincidence. Wait, well, I, I will say this. I will say this. Oh no, let's let, before after okay, we can say that, but look at the schedule, and you only go there once a year. Yeah. Okay. And and I'm going to tell you something. I'm just going to tell you something here because you know what? I I mean, I have to say it. 
Denver is probably the toughest place to play. Denver is a place where you don't, you, if you're not ready to play, don't be experimenting in Denver. Okay. Now I'm just telling, I'm t- Denver and along with, I'm going to tell you another place that's tough to play too, is Salt Utah. Lake City. Yeah, Utah. Yes. Altitude. Okay. And you don't want to be playing around in Denver because I'm going to tell you something, that altitude is for real. Okay. That's for, that's okay. for now. I'm at now. What I, do I want to see him play? Yes. Da 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 da. But I can remember my first time playing in Denver. Mo, it, it felt like razor blades were running through my chest. That's how I feel when <laughs> I play just anywhere in the world. Oh no! Well, I'm telling you, <laughs> it it literally felt like razor blades was in my chest. Okay, playing playing there in in in. I get I get it. My in, my thing here is. If the calf issue was an issue on the 22nd over a week ago, right? Then he should have not played the last two games against the Warriors and the Suns. Because that's when the issue was flagged. It's not that he picked it up during the Suns game. It was an issue before. And knowing everything that's on the line with the narratives, you have to be aware of the reality of in a perfect world. Yeah, perfect. You can rest. The reality is everyone wants to see this. You owe it to the fans. Because that's who you're going out to play for. Every basketball okay, fan in well, the let, world. Let, let, let's, to okay, this. let's let let's take your let's take your let's take your the way you're going here. You're, the, what you're saying is he's he's dodging the action. That's what you're I'm saying. not okay. saying that. No, I'm no, saying no, no, you're not I'm saying, not saying, saying it, saying but you're insinuating. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm not saying he's dodging the action. I'm saying the team, the medical staff, the organization, because I know that he would want to play if he could play. If they gave him the all clear, okay. he will play. Okay, I'm just asking the question if it's a coincidence. Now, it might not be him that's dodging the smoke. Maybe it's the front office. Maybe it's the coach. Maybe it's the medical staff. But if you're looking at the schedule, you have the Warriors, who are barely making the playoffs. You have the Suns, who still don't have Kevin Durant back. It would make sense for the love of the game, for the fans who pay money to watch you play, to be available for this one that everyone wants to watch, not the other ones that people don't really care about to the extent that they care about this. So I'm not saying it's him ducking the smoke. Maybe it's his coach trying to protect him. Maybe it's his well, father. I'm going to say this. Maybe it's I'm going to say this. I don't know. But if the yeah, because because if he picked up the issue this weekend, cool. But it's been an issue for over a week now. So you would have taken a necessary rest and not played those two games so that you can be available for tonight so that every basketball fan in the world can see the matchup that they've been waiting all season to watch. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's a fair, that's a fair assessment. However, when you're looking at these schedules, when you're looking at these schedules, right. And when you say, when you take a road trip, right. And I think the first leg of their road trip was golden state. Without them saying this, but with them saying this, they wanted to make a statement and try to win because those were both winnable, winnable games, especially Phoenix. They had that game one in, in Golden State, and they let it slip away. And JoJo was magnificent. I mean, he he had, I, I think he had like 40 points that game, if I remember correctly. Now, I don't know what he was doing, but my guy, Bismack Biyombo, was <laughs> sensational. Because <laughs> okay. he, he finally went up against the center who played with physicality. It's a ref We can say whatever. All, all I'm saying is, all, all I'm saying is, on a back to back, Bismack was sensational. Okay, he was sensational. Now, I don't know, I don't know what was going on with Philly. It was a tough game there in Golden State. They traveled to Phoenix, but all I know is the big fella Bismack was terrific. He had like he had a double double. Something like 17 and 11 or something like that with like five block shots. Okay. Now, those were two games I'm sure that they said in the locker room on this trip, we got to get those two. We got to get those two. And then we'll figure out what's going to happen in Denver. I don't know if they have another trip after this, right? Or another game after this. Now that this is happening, Mo, as you know, it's kind of like, you know how you ever see some players, Mo, they get hit 
and they 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 suddenly their 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 arm hurts mm-hmm. going back on defense, but then all of a sudden it miraculously heals when it goes back to the offense. Well, after these two losses now, I'm sure the calf is a little tight. I'm mm-hmm. sure it's a little tight. I'm sure okay. it's a little tight. Now, all I'm going to say is we can look at this however we want to look at it. Let's hear. But we just have to wait to the NBA Finals now, Mo. That's that's what we have to do. And I'm sure the Celtics will have something to say about that. Okay. I'm sure the Warriors, the Milwaukee Bucks – We'll have something to say about it, but it is what it is. You you it's played like, you played alongside an MVP who won a few MVPs in his time. If he was in an MVP race, which was going neck and neck down to the end of the season, which didn't really happen because he was just a, a runaway MVP every time. Oh, it's it. a different. It's a, it's if, a different if he era. Era. was I'm not if he compare. was neck and neck with let's say Magic Johnson, for example, and you had a road trip of three games in four nights, and the final game was against the Lakers, and he had a sore calf. Do you not think you'd find a way to play? Well, th- this is what I'm going to say. This is a different era now. Okay. This is a different era. And I'm not going to compare eras. And mo- and, the- and the- here's the one thing, Mo, that I will never cross. I, I never will. I'm never going to question if someone says they can't go. Because you know, let me tell you something, Mo. Unfortunately, I've seen where, where you don't believe someone when they say they're hurt and then they go out there and something and they're really hurt and and I've seen it the other way where you believe someone's hurt and, and then they, they, I, you know they're not really hurt okay yeah but Mo I, I'm, I'm not naive so either way however Mo I've made a, a conscious choice to say if some I'm going to if Mo says for some reason, hey, BJ, I'm really sick and I can't do the podcast tomorrow. My first response as a good friend is be like, Mo, I hope you feel better. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, fly me to L.A., bro. <laughs> okay. Now, only Mo knows if he's really sick <laughs> and only <laughs> Mo knows <laughs> what's really going on. But. As a good friend I and a you. person, I don't want I don't want to start. Player X comes up and says he's hurt, and I go, he's not really hurt. He's just faking. No, 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 no. That's not because Mo. You can't. I don't want to live that way, and mm. I want to take people at their word. But I am. I I'm not naive though, Mo. Mm-hmm. But because I've seen the other side, I've seen. I mean, I, I feel bad saying it, but I've seen organizations who didn't believe a player was actually injured, and and, and Mo, he was play. really hurt. It made him play, and I've seen the other way too, though Mo. And I've seen the other way too. All right, I, I'm not just just pro player or pro team. I've seen both sides of the of this coin. So I want I've made a choice, Mo, to say, okay, he can't go, and if he can't go, Mo, then he can't go. Let's move on. And let's let's hear because I'm telling you something. Nothing is worse than an injury. Yeah, it's, nothing's worse. No, and you course. know what, Mo? And, and and you know, like I know we're having fun here, but I'm gonna tell you something. Playing 82 games, which I've been fortunate enough to do, Mo. That, that's 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 tough, man. And there were nights, Mo, where. And looking back on it, Mo, that I played with broken fingers and stuff. And that was just then. Okay. <laughs> you had a sprained ankle, Mo. You iced it up. You taped it up. You put a little, little, whatever, little hot sauce on that thing. And you, <laughs> you went out there and you played. Okay. The icy hot. <laughs> icy hot or whatever I call it. Hot sauce. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. And looking back at it now, Mo. I don't know if that was the right thing to do, but that's what we did. Yeah. And, 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 and Mo, like I've had broken fingers and I play and you know what I did, Mo? I just taped them up. Cause you know what? That's what we did. Now a guy has a, you know, a jam pinky and he's out for three weeks. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not saying we were tough in this generation of salt. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's different. Well, Shots, you played seven straight seasons with 
eight, 80 or six straight with 82 games and the first one was 81 games. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Mo. And I, I, that's what I'm saying. And I'm not, and Mo, and trust me, there were some games I should have set out for sure. Mm -hmm. But that was just the era in which I played in. Mm -hmm. And and that was a different time. Okay, Mo, we didn't have MRI. You had an MRI, but you didn't go to MRI. You you fell down, you heard some crack, and you know it. Hey, let's tape it up. Keep it going. Can you move it? Yeah, I, I can move it. Well, can you shoot? Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can figure out how to do it. And then you play. That's what mm -hmm. you did, Mo. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like that was just and that was a different time. So I don't, I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, but that was that mentality then. And the medical staff are better now, no doubt about it. The 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 the, the way they prepare is better. The food, the travel, and all of the things. And you know what? If they're hurt, if the player says he's hurt, then I believe him and I move on. Okay. Well, someone who's not a fan of this is uh, Kendrick Perkins, who went on TV today, and he said, "I'm going to quote Kendrick Perkins here." He says, okay. I'm not going to do the voice. He says, Joe Embiid is ducking the smoke. Well, you got to do the voice. I can't, you gotta I can't do the voice. I can't do, do Perk's you voice. Gotta do the I can't voice. do I can't do but you, I'd have to practice. I can't yeah. do it. I can't do it now. Uh, you you got to do it. Come on. You gotta I can't. Do I can't. I, can't. Yeah. I, I have to listen to it more and then I can. Hey, 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 hey. We have nothing else to talk about. So at least give us a little <laughs> entertainment here. <laughs> We're not talking. Mo, you know my rule. I like to talk about stuff on the court. We're talking about all the court. So if you're going to make me do something, then you got to give me a little, you know. Uh, <laughs> so you might as well give me a little. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Oh, oh, I, you need, I, need, it. I, need, I need to listen to it so it's fresh in my head first. You know what I'm saying? I need to. Can you hear this? Yeah. Ducking awesome. Oh, awesome. Somebody throw some. Oh man, Joel Embiid is <laughs> ducking that smoke today, and y'all know how I feel about Joel Embiid. <laughs> he said he's ducking the smoke. You cannot sit this one out when it comes down to these matchups. I have a vote for MVP, and I'm gonna remember remember this moment. Now, the first thing here is after being so anti Jokic all year, it's gonna be hilarious if he ends up voting for Jokic. Second of all, how the hell did they give Kendrick Perkins a vote? They need to give us a vote if they're going to get Kendrick. Well, it's part of, yeah, it's part of, he's, he's um, in the media. Um, oh, he's in the media. I'm in the media Listen, too. Who, in, who am I going to talk to to get a vote? Well, it's, it, Commissioner Silver. All right. Send me his Silver. number. Silver. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, we'll do right after the show. <laughs> hey, Adam, I need a vote. Um, uh, but but it, he, he raised an interesting point. I mean, I don't think that this one game, especially if he is injured, can discount him from MVP. But... This will be Joel Embiid's 14th missed game of the season so far. There's only been one player in NBA history who's missed over 12 games and still won the MVP. Do you know who that yeah. player was? I have no idea. It was Bill Walton in 1990, no, 1978, who missed okay. 24 games. But when he did do that, I think that the, the Portland, was it Portland, had like the best record in yeah. the NBA by a big stretch. NBA. Like yeah, okay. Um, yeah, they they had the best record in the league, and um, the Sixers don't have the best record in the league. Do you think? You know, we all know that MB missed some games. Giannis has missed a bunch of games. Even Jokic has missed games. But do you think by him missing this one, it's just putting a spotlight, like it's putting a spotlight on how many games he's missed? Because it hasn't really felt like he's missed a lot of games this year. It feels well, like he's I, really I think around. You know, he. I think JoJo understands the importance of being, his availability. He missed a lot of games at the beginning of the season, you know, by his own admission. I mean, he wasn't in the best of shape. So the fact that he is missing this game, I think, I think, but again, that's just me, it's just me, that he knows that he has to have as many games as he possibly, that he can possibly play for this, for this MVP thing. I mean, you, you can't miss that many games. So mm -hmm. I think it's important for him. You know, he can say he, it's not important to him, but I think it is important to him. And and, and this is why it's important. To, this is what this is why it's important to Jojo. OK, now let's get past all of this. Right. Because really, truly, you know, this stuff really, you know, it matters, but it really doesn't matter. But I will say this. You know, Jojo now he's on the clock. Meaning. Every year you would like to think that you have a chance, right? You know, like every year you come back and you go, hey man, we yeah. got it. We'll win it. We don't He's win in it his this prime. Year, we'll win it. He's in his prime. He's in his prime. Okay. 
And JoJo is too good of a player. I'm going to say this here. He's too good of a player to not won at least one MVP. Okay. When I think of some of the MVPs that I've seen, right. And I've seen some incredible players. Like think about this. Shaquille O'Neal only has one MVP. Mm. Kobe Bryant only has one MVP. Okay. Joel Embiid is too good of a player to not have at least one MVP. And he's in the prime of his career now. And I'm, and I'm, and, and I'm beginning because he's, this is, if he, if he played in 70 something games right now, I think his argument is like, wow. Like, yeah. His if, he, if he played in 70 games, games, he would have the award locked saves. up. I'm beginning to get concerned because as you age, Mo, it gets tougher and tougher to gear that up. And he's a big man. I mean, if you ever seen Jojo, he's, he's a he's big huge, man. huge. Yeah. He's huge. Okay. So I want him personally because I, I love, you know, I love bigs anyway. You know, Giannis, who I think is the best player, has two. Jokic has two. Mm-hmm. And to think that JoJo is right. JoJo is as good as anybody in this league. Okay. I want him to get one before he passes his prime. Mm-hmm. And now I'm beginning to get concerned because of not because of his talent, because of one thing, Mo, his availability. And when I think of all of the great players who've played this game, and when I think about Kobe Bryant only has one MVP, Shaquille O'Neal only has one MVP. Mm-hmm. We're talking about arguably two of the 20 greatest players of all time. Okay. I don't care. You know, we get into who's the greatest. I don't know who's the greatest, but I know this. Those two talents alone are two of the greatest talents to ever play the game. Mm -hmm. And JoJo as a talent, as a talent, JoJo is, he could have played any era, any era. He probably would have been better in the previous era than this, than the era that he's currently in. Mm -hmm. However, I would hope that he would get himself in condition while he's still in his prime to take advantage of this opportunity that's in front of him. And that's, that that's just coming from one player, former player to another, because it, it you, you think it's going to last forever, Mo, but it's not one day it's going to be over and you're going to look back and say, could have, would have, should have, oughta. And, yeah. and if he doesn't win the MVP, it's not because of talent, it's because of his availability. And that to me would be something that I, that he will look back on and said, because it is important, Mo. It is important. Even though you don't want to make it important, like, like I play with MVPs, right? Mm-hmm. They never would say it's important, but Mo, I felt as a teammate, it was important. <laughs> I felt it yeah. was important. Like, I felt it was important to get it for him because I'm always rooting for my teammates. You yeah. know what I'm saying here, Mo? You know what I mean? Like, if I can help, you know, he has 37 points. And I know the coach is going to bring him out. Mo, if I can get him to 40, it just yeah. looks better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying, Mo? Yeah. And, and, and I, I took great pride in that. Like, Mo, I took great pride in that. Like, I didn't help the guy score, but I helped him score. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you no, know what I, I mean? feel you. I feel you. Or, you want to see your guys winning. You want to no, see your team. You want to see your I guys see, shine. I want to see my guys shine. Mo, I want to see my guys shine. So I, it is important for Joel to do it because if I play with Joel, I would be like, "Hey, Jojo, we're gonna work tomorrow night, big fella. Mm-hmm. I don't want you worried about nothing. We gonna we go go get this MVP. Like that's how I felt coming into a game. Yeah. Like no one was going to come in our guy. You know what I mean? And that's the fun part about being on a team. That's why I always tell you, Mo. I found nothing greater than be a part of a team because you know when your guys got your back, it's the greatest feeling. It's like mm-hmm. okay. Oh, we plan against, oh, we plan against, you know, we play, we plan against, you know, Clyde Drexler. Okay. We got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mo, we, we got, hey, Mo, we got you. <laughs> you I know what it. I mean? I hear it. So, you know, and, and listen, one of the great bigs that I've, big battles that I've seen in, 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 in most recent time is Akeem Olajuwon and David Robinson. Oh, that was a classic. 
And Mo, you as and as a big, when your guards tell you, "I got you, big fella." Mm -hmm. Mo, that means something. You follow what I'm saying here, Mo? Mo, yeah, yeah. Like, I got you, big fella. Hey, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna shoot that three tonight that I normally shoot. I'm yeah. coming to you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mo. You know what I'm saying, Mo? You know what I mean, like Mo, like. Like, you know, if there's an MVP race going. Yeah. Like, I knew my guy wouldn't. He, because winning was important. But you know what, Mo? I was turning down some shots to make sure that my guy got his 50. To make sure that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we did what we had to do. Mo, we did what we had to do to make sure we sent a statement. Yeah. We here. We, yeah. well, Mo. Now, he, and when, and when he got, the, when he, Raised up that MVP mode, we all knew all of us contributed that because we wanted that for him. He would never say that, but it was important for us. Yeah. To say that. So, Mo, that to me is that's the fun part about being on the team. And that's the only part really that I miss. And I wish I could have seen that tonight because I want the other eight guys on the court to be like both helping those two guys yeah. play a game within a game. And that to me, Mo, is the great, because when, because when your star player is playing against the other star player, Mo, it was the greatest. Yeah. I like think, Mo, like, you, you know what I mean? What would be hilarious is if Philly win this game anyway, without that beat and all the pressure, like we just spent a half hour talking about a beat, then if the, the Jokic loses this game tonight, like we, we recorded before the game. We don't know what's going to happen. You guys will know when you hear this, but that would be pretty right. hilarious. But I would love to see them feed the ball to the big fellas down low. Let them go to work. Let them go to work. I want to see no screens or nothing. Let's go. I, 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 I mean, I love that. I mean, but then again, like, we don't well, really see like, that. Last time they played, he let PJ Sucker guard him, but it, it is what it is. But yeah, he did the interview today. And this is why I'm so annoyed about him not playing is he did the interview today where he was throwing shades about you know, I could go out and stat pad and get a triple double X, Y, Z in his interview. And um, then you just don't play the game. It's cool. I get it. You know, I hope I hope his calf gets better. And I genuinely hope that he has a healthy playoff run. Because although I think it's very unlikely that we see these two teams against each other in the finals, how amazing would it be to see seven games of these two guys going head to head? Oh, uh, that that would that would be amazing. Hey, what's wrong with James Harden, by the way? What what's wrong with him right now? Uh, James Harden is. I actually didn't check it out because I was I was so annoyed that Embiid's not playing. I just logged out for the rest of the day uh, until we started doing this podcast. <laughs> um, James Harden has missed three straight games because of a sore Achilles. Is on track to return on Monday night, uh, but I guess that it's still sore, so he's not ready. Ooh, not ready to return. Oh, okay. I guess he participated fully in the morning shoot around um, ended his time on the court with an emphatic dunk after passing the ball to himself off the backboard. So okay. who knows? Who knows? But yeah, that's that. Let us know in the discord or on social media who your MVP is after tonight's events and uh, stay locked in because saw calf, saw Achilles or not. We still going to be here. We still going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> you know the vibes I'm, say, I'm saying that I'm actually saying that but I don't think I can actually record tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst possible time for me to ever say that so the plan uh, is the plan is for you guys to get the Alan Iverson interview tomorrow uh, so that's actually okay. the plan so it won't be a live episode <laughs> so stay locked in though regardless uh, and in the meantime you guys know the vibes make sure you subscribe tell a friend leave a review and all that good stuff if you're a Sixers fan you're going to hate us after this or you're going to hate me after this you're going to love BJ so stay locked in even if it's just to listen to BJ uh, but most importantly in the meantime you know <laughs> <laughs> get buckets <laughs>